already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life, and we're back. What happens when you can't pay your prison debt? My man ain't send the money. Man, they must have messed up on my paperwork. The money ain't there. I'll get you next week. Is there going to be repercussions? You have to pay that back? What's going to happen if you can't pay it back? I done seen it all. Let's relive it. So before we start, let me let y'all know I am tired. My little boy is three. Man, the dude's got so much energy. He's like lightning in a bottle. Decided he wasn't going to go to sleep till 5.45 this morning. What's well, about 6.40 now and I'm at work? So I'm a little tired. I ain't had no sleep. But got to keep the company running. Missed y'all this weekend. I got to drop this content. So let's get into it. I told y'all before I started off doing time a long time ago. I've seen a whole bunch of, man, so many incidents of dudes getting hurt behind borrowing stuff, owing stuff, not being able to pay for stuff. So I tell y'all, if you ever find yourself locked up, don't take nothing from nobody, don't owe nobody nothing. Just wait till you get your own. But the average person, they're going to let hunger get the best of them and they're going to go get something from somebody. First story I'm going to tell y'all comes out of good old Philly, man, 215. CFCF, Karen Fromm Hole Correctional Facility, 7901 State Road. Anybody from Philly that's been through CFCF knows how CFCF gets down. Google it. You know, you got inmates, you know, killing other inmates. This, I think it's this year, last year, they had more murders in that place than anywhere else, man. You know what I mean, they were popping off every other month. So this first story I'm going to give you is about my cellmate, a dude by the name of Barry. Let me give you the backdrop on Barry now. Barry decides he's going to rob some people out in South Philly. Out there with the pistol, he's got a revolver, he's got it, you know, pointing at these people. The cops drive by, they see him robbing people on the streets. They hop out on him, pull their guns out, freeze, don't move. Barry sees the cops, turns, takes off running. They're chasing Barry. Barry trips, and when he trips... He falls with the gun and the gun goes off. Boom! Now the cops think they sh that you know Barry shot at him, so they start shooting at Barry. Barry screams, ah! Throws the gun. He ain't built for all that, right? He ain't trying to bring it out with the cops. He screams, throws the gun. They cuff Barry. Take Barry on, you know, on up out of there. Barry ends up, you know, becoming my cellmate. Soon as Barry got in there, Barry didn't have nothing, but he kept saying his grandma was going to send him some money. His grandma's got him. His grandma's got him, right? I gave him the game. I said, look, man, you can't be borrowing stuff in here and thinking you, you're not going to pay these dudes back with it. You're just going to get over it. It's not going to happen like that. Like, these dudes expect to have that money or they're going to go upside your head. Grandma says she's going to send it. She's going to send it. I'm like, all right, man, your grandma, you know, you better hope to God she sends it because, you know, you borrowed this stuff last week. We got a couple days to commissary. And if you ain't got that money, you know what I mean? Dudes is coming. Day before commissary, you get this little slip whenever you get money sent in. It's almost like a receipt. They bring you this little receipt. Receipt shows you, hey, somebody put money on my books. Barry still ain't got no money. <clears throat> I told Barry, I said, you need to go holler at these dudes, man. Don't wait till the store day and they be expecting you to go over there, get that bag, come back and pay them back their food, and you ain't got it. Barry said, nah, it'll be all right, man. It'll be all right. I'm cool with dudes, right? I said, no, nah, it don't work that way, man. That's not how it works. Sure enough, store day rolls around. They start calling names for commissary. Barry's name don't get called. Barry don't go to commissary. It ain't long after that. You know, the dudes that he owes, most of them dudes don't even go to the store. They don't go to commissary because they got so many people that owe them that any money that hits their books, they just let it sit there. Dudes are standing in the doorway you know, watching all the guys that owe them money go collect their stuff. Then the guys will go to their cell, drop their bag off, sort through it, and then take what they owe over to the guys they owe. Commissary people roll out. Barry ain't getting no bag. I'm looking around. I didn't got my commissary. I see dudes that he owes, and he owes like four or five different people. And they're all, you know, caught up in the midst of collecting the money that everybody else owes them. You know, some guys might owe for cigarettes, weed, drugs, gambling, 
you know, store box and commissary, wine, you name it. If you owe, you got to pay. Everybody's don't want to pay these dudes now, except for Barry. So they keep glancing over in the direction of my cell. And Barry's in the cell sitting on the bunk like, I'm going to go holler at him. I'm going to go holler at him. I said, all right. I see the first dude come on over. Dude comes to the cell and says, Jay, I need to holler at your cellmate. That's his way of telling me I need to go in there. It's probably going to get physical. I ain't trying to disrespect you by doing this in your house, but I need to holler at him. I said, all right, man. So I step out the cell and stand by the door. I hear him talking. Barry's like, man, grandma said she sent it, but it just ain't. And all I hear is, wow, open hand slap. I look in the cell, Barry's holding his face. Dude told him, get my shit. Walks out the cell. About five, maybe 10 minutes later, another dude comes to the cell. He said, Jay, you already know what it is. I said, yeah, I told dude, man. I step outside, dude goes in there, roughs Barry up, grabs him up by his neck, slams him against the wall, bangs his head a couple times. Beats on him a little bit, like not in his face, but body beats him. Boom, 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 boom. Fucking bears his ribs up. This is all in a 10-minute period. He's already been hit by, you know, two different dudes. Third dude comes to the cell. Pretty much same scenario. Slaps Barry up, punches him in his face a couple times. By now, the other dudes come over and they tell him, I don't give a fuck who you owe. Next time we go to the store, if you ain't got my shit, I'm going to stomp you. You know what I mean? You already nodded up. I think you get the message. He owed like five different dudes money. You get the message. Have our shit. We're not playing. So Barry looks at me. He's like, Jay, man, can I? I said, no, nah, bro. I'm not loaning it to you. There's a message in everything. You know what I mean? How you go from owing them to owing me, then I end up having to put hands on you. We fall out in the cell. No, sir. I told you from the gate, do not be borrowing shit from these dudes. You knew it all. Now you got to figure this shit out, man. You better get on the phone to your grandma and have her, you know, come up here and drop the check in the mailbox out front. You know what I mean? <clears throat> we roll around. Days go by. Barry says, oh, man, my grandma says she sent it, but she ain't put no damn stamp on the envelope and it got sent back. Here we are three days before store again. Dudes are also watching when mail time comes around. To see if Barry gets any type of mail. You know what I mean? Because you'll see him get that, that little slip. They all know Barry ain't got no money, right? I never expected. I mean, now I do. But I didn't expect at the time what happened next, right? They're coming by and they're doing count one night. And as they're walking by, you know, they look in. They mark down both people are there. Then count clears. You know, they turn in all the numbers. They need to account for all the people in the building. As the guards are walking by, Barry goes, hey, come here, come here, come here. The guard comes back, and they're like, what's up, man? He said, I want to go to the hole. The guard said, well, you checking in. Checking in means you're voluntarily going to the hole. You fear for your life. You go into the hole with hopes of when you come out, they're going to put you somewhere else in the compound so you don't have to go back around these guys you got issues with. Barry said, yeah, man, I want to go to the hole, man. They said, well, you ain't done that wrong. You ain't going to the hole. Barry said, I fear for my life. They said, look, man, we ain't got time for this. If you owe somebody, you need to pay the people, whatever you got going on, the hole is packed. Barry said, okay. We come out after count. You got this you know, our ordinary day room area. Then you got an upper area where we eat at and stuff. And there's an officer station up there, right? So Barry goes up there, tells the guard, I want to go to the hole. Everybody can hear this. Everybody sees him checking in. But if somebody he owes somebody money, they're not going to go up there and attack him in front of the guard because A, they're going to the hole and B, everybody else that owes them money, they're not going to be able to collect that money. So they got to catch Barry when he's away from the guards. Barry tells him, I said I want to go to the hole. No, you're not letting you check in. I mean, the hole is full. Barry spazzes out, takes his arm and clears everything off the CO's desk. It's like a little, like a little desk area up there at the front of the pod, right? Right next to where they serve trays and stuff. Computer screen, Everything they got there, Barry, boom, slams it all off the desk. Shit hits the floor, goes everywhere. The guard jumps up, you know, lost your fucking mind. Grabs Barry, runs him up against the window, slams him, cuffs him, hits the code. They come in, take Barry's ass to the hole. 
that's just one instance. I've seen situations where they go back and try to make the cellmate pay dudes debt. I wasn't doing that. I had already, I was young, dumb, violent, wilding out. I've been wilding out since I got in there. Been in a bunch of confrontations, several different fights. I got into fighting with an officer in the cell. Like dudes knew I was thump. But I'd seen other situations where your cellmate checks in. And these dudes come to you and say, hey, let us get that money. What you mean let you get that money? That was your homeboy. He's gone now. This is your debt. The next one I seen, man, this was kind of crazy. And this is, you know, just another one of these crazy stories, man. Where I was at at Greensville, I was in 7th Building. That's like the Terror Dome. That's what they used to call it. It goes down in 7th Building. If you get thrown in 7th Building... You come from the hole, whatever, like you go in a seven building, you know two things. A, that bitch is off the chain. It's jumping. All the drugs, all the alcohol, everything you want is right there in seven building. And B, seven building is very violent. People get stabbed. A lot of gang members got a whole entire pod that's nothing but gang members. And then gang members mixed throughout the entire building. We have a dude in there, man, that comes in, and this dude is a white dude, typical white dude, got some tattoos on him and stuff, you know, maybe 180, 185 pounds, about six foot tall. Same scenario. This dude comes in, and he starts borrowing stuff from everybody. Now, I told y'all, if you watch my, you watch the channel, you rock with me, you've seen all the stories, I had a dude in the cell next to me named Jingling. Jingling was a notorious booty bandit. Jingling was known for turning out white boys. Jingling was known for taking that ass. Jingling was serious when it came to his love and infatuation for white boys and being a booty bandit. This white dude runs up a tab with everybody. I mean, a bill with everybody. Come store day, he can't pay it. Dudes are ready to get at him. When you walk in the pod with that commissary bag, all the store box guys, guys that you know are old money, they'll stand up there and you might you might hear somebody say, yo, you know what I mean? If you owe it, throw it. You know, if you owe me, throw me. Dude ain't going to commissary, he don't know what to do. He knows he's gonna get smashed, he might get stabbed. You know, these are gang members he owes him. They gonna do something real bad to him over this money, man. Plus, he's been smoking weed, so he owes this dude $40, this dude $40, this dude $40. The bar and cigarettes from everybody, man, they're not playing in there. You know what I mean? That little shit, a bag of chips and a soda can get your ass stabbed or get your front teeth knocked out or get you stomped out in the middle of a cell or just completely beat up, right? Dude is walking around, going to people, trying to borrow stuff to pay other people back, thinking that's just going to be his way out. Well, I'll just borrow it from other people and then go pay them back. That's a no-no. If somebody knows you're doing that, they're going to say no. You know what I mean? Like I said, well, Barry, how are you going to come to me and try to get something for me to pay that man, and now you owe me, but you paid him? What would make you think that I don't think I'm not going to get paid? You know what I mean? If you can't pay him, you can't pay me. He's going to everybody that he hasn't borrowed something from, asking him, everybody saying, nah, man. You know, motherfuckers told you to stop borrowing stuff. You got to learn. It's just how prison is. Here comes jingling. I'm standing in my doorway, smoking a cigarette, done with the commissary, just chilling, you know what I mean? Watching what's going on around me, watching these dudes running around like chickens with their heads cut off from cell to cell, taking soups to this cell, soda to this cell, cigarettes to this dude, you know what I mean? Just paying all their debts. As dudes walking, trying to borrow stuff, jingling calls him. Hey, yo, come here, come here. Dude comes over to cell. Jingling says, who all do you owe, man? And I already know where Jingling's going with this. Jingling's gonna pay the debt. He tells him, I owe T, I owe Nate, man, I owe, you know what I mean? He starts listing off all the people. He's like, bring me the list of all the stuff you owe and let me check it out. So he brings in the list. Jingling's looking at the list. He's like, damn, dog, you owe a lot of shit. You know what I mean? Like, people ain't playing behind us. You probably gonna end up getting stabbed. Dude's like, can you help me out? Can you help me out? Jingling's like, you know what I mean? I'm standing five feet from him. In my doorway, Jingling standing in his doorway, dude's in front of him. Jingling said, yeah, I can help you out, but you're going to have to help me out. He said, yeah, I'll get you back, I'll get you back. You know what I mean? With interest, Jingling said, nah, 
Ain't no get me back with interest. I don't want the commissary. I don't want the cigarettes. Dude said, well, what you want me to say? Money your books? Jingling said, no, nah, I want that ass. Dude said, what? He said, I want that ass. Like, slide up in the cell, let me get that ass, and I'll give you the commissary. I'll give you the cigarettes, I'll give you everything you need to go pay it off. I'll put it in the bag before you even come in here. Dude said, man, you tripping. He said, man, you better look the fuck around, look where you at. These dudes ain't playing. You got, like, T is a gorilla. T is standing in the door looking down at dude like, when this dude done played me, you know what I mean? Nate is a gorilla. Nate's doing the same thing. Sleeps a couple cells down for T, looking down like, yeah, this motherfucker's trying to borrow money. He ain't got my money. I knew where this was going. Jingling and told him, you can come up off them cheeks, man. Come up off that ass and pay that debt. Or they gonna come in out here and they gonna stab you up and smash you. You can see it on fit dude's face like, man, he ain't got no other option. I'd have took the ass whoop. First of all, I'm not a dummy. I'm not gonna put myself in those situations. I've seen this time and time again. This dude slides in the cell with Jingling. Jingling closes the door at that point there. I walk off. I'm not trying to hear it, because you're going to hear it. I'm not trying to smell it. His cell was right next to mine. You're going to smell it, and you know what I mean by smell it. Maybe 10 minutes passes. Dude comes on out the cell. He's got a bag of stuff over his shoulder. Jingling steps in his, in, into his doorway. Looks around, everybody's got this grin on his face like, yeah, y'all know what just happened. Dude goes to his cell, splits the commissary up, and goes and pays everybody. Everybody's seen him do this. Now, you got dudes in the pod that would rather have that ass than have that commissary. It wouldn't be long after this. This dude would just start going to dudes that he would get stuff from. I say, look, instead of me just paying you back, why don't I just come in the cell and we close the door, handle our business, and we'll just call it even. This is the type of shit that I got to live with inside of my head. These are the type of things I had to witness. These are just a couple of these stories. I could make this a five-hour long video, but I'm not going to. I just wanted to give y'all a glimpse into what can possibly happen if you get locked up and don't pay somebody, you think that if you fight, that debt is paid? No, that debt is not paid. That just means you got beat up, and next week, you're going to get beat up again. And if you ain't got it the following week, you're going to get beat up again. And eventually, they're going to get tired of beating you up, and they're going to try to take you up out of here or do something to you so bad that you got to be taken off to the infirmary or med flighted to the hospital. Some dudes might not even beat you up. Some some of them dudes, you know, owe Jingling some money and see what happens. There ain't going to be no discussing. There ain't going to be no waiting on it. It's going to happen. I tell y'all these things to try to keep y'all from having to live through these things, from having to see these things, from closing your eyes and remembering the things you've been through. These aren't pleasant memories from me. You know, these aren't things I like thinking about or remember seeing, but that's the facts of the matter. And that's what makes me react and act the way I, I act out here in this world. Because I don't want no parts of that world. To anybody running around getting high thinking shit's sweet, they will put you in there with Jingling. They will put you in there with T. They will put you in there with Nate. To anybody thinking they can run these streets, mom and daddy don't know what they're talking about. On the day that you find your ass in prison and you start seeing these things happen, I want you to think back to this video. Think back to my warnings. I wish the best for everybody. Unless you're doing something that's hurting other people, hurting women, hurting children. Each one teach one, each one reach one. But like I've told y'all before, man, these institutions, they're just crazier worlds inside of this already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always... This is Jay Williams. Let's live life. To all my real ones and the are some real ones watching. Because y'all still watching me. Y'all know how we do, man. Salute.